October 5th and Cole and I are gonna go back into this spot where I spotted some bucks a couple nights ago. They were out by this river on a night that was pretty darn hot throughout the whole day. It was like 84, 85 degrees, something like that. And I just sat in my car where I could see into this bottom and spot them down in there. They were coming up out of the creek, feeding on acorns looked like along the edge. And then they worked their way back down into the creek. So Cole and I are gonna slide down in there tonight, see if we can get close to where they were at along that edge. We got all our saddle stuff in case we want to get in the tree. I think there's probably a good chance we're gonna end up on the ground just because we got a lot of wind cover. If we spot one, we should be able to move pretty easily on it with the wind. The last couple days, I hunted over that water hole, went back in there the next morning, ended up just seeing a couple does. And then I hunted a creek last night where I bumped into that big buck four or five days ago now. And I just had like two does come in there to the water hole and that was about it. But we got a pretty significant front rolling in tonight. It's gonna be real windy this afternoon. And then tomorrow morning, it's gonna be like 38 degrees for low and only getting up to about 57 degrees. So we got high hopes for these next few days here. I think Jake's rolling into the house here the next hour or so. So he'll probably be out hunting somewhere too. But Cole and I are going in here and see if we can, uh, see if we can get it done. Cole's yet to his first kill of the deer tour. Driving him nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kill. That's pretty good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I was not expecting you to shoot that target. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to shoot that. Oh boy. Shall we hunt? See, we're getting out here just in time. Right when the deer start to get up, you don't want to get out there any earlier than that because mm -hmm. you can't see them if they're not on their feet usually. Yeah, Ted's been out there since four o'clock. Yeah. What a silly goose. Three and a half inches wide. <laughs> I know. He's <laughs> kind of got a cool rack. Yeah. You know, I mean, if it stays up like this, we should be able to move on stuff. Mm -hmm. Get the right mindset. This is so much better than what it usually is. Yeah. Like this stuff has never been this tall. Drought helped us here. Could be laying anywhere. This is the stuff that they're in right here. I don't know if I'm going to shoot a doe once we get set up back in there, but if we may be on the way. On the way, yeah. Seems like it might be worth just kind of easing our way into the spot throughout a couple days because nobody's been in here yet. And obviously there's a bunch of deer tracks. Usually there's human tracks with those, but we've seen five deer. We can still see the car going back into a spot where I've had a lot of luck during this time here in the past. I hit a buck here a couple years ago around this time frame, and then last year we called that one in. What was it, the eighth maybe? Yeah. So Maybe he's back in here again this year. We've seen two small bucks right up front here. So we're just gonna just keep easing our way back. We're walking straight into the wind. We're gonna get up on a little higher point where we can look down into this marshy ground. So the wind's gonna stay up like this throughout the afternoon. So if we get eyes on something, we'll probably be able to make a move. Let's get up there and force to it. Go to the, the old folks' home? Yeah. Another deer way down there. I think it's a good chase, sucker.
Oh my god. Look at that one. down here because I'm not in mindset to shoot something right now. Let me just shot a huge block. <laughs> you like <laughs> Oh I see. Film him Nick. He was was when we first saw him. His head came out. He was on. There's a trail right there. He was on at ten yards. There's just gonna be a light scout night. You know, get up, uh, get up on a high point and get do a little observation. But I, I wasn't kidding when I said let's go back to the old folks home either. It's like it's what it felt like. All that arrowhead playing up there. He's like a food plot. There's been nobody in here, no boot tracks. So you, you just gotta treat it like opening day almost. The, the does and the small bucks are going to be stacked right up next to the food source. Yeah. And then the big boys are going to be back there, like just one in the bedding area back behind it. And that's where both of them were. And I don't know what that other buck was. But right when we sat down, you said, if you should be ready, one might pop up right around this edge. Oh my God. <laughs> that's what I put that there for. Jake, I can't believe that. I, that's, this is the most in disbelief I've ever been while hunting at well, I've never you? felt more like I've, I'm in a dream in my life. <laughs> This is an excellent way to start the weekend. I'm still riding off the high of Crystal Shooter first buck. I'm like, honestly, my season's made at this point. My season's already made. I wanted us to have a good hunt with Tyler and Jimmy. That exceeded all expectations. We get out with Crystal, she gets her first buck. And then we go sit for 20 minutes. <laughs> I should go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> we should. Do you want to watch it? I mean, he could, like you said, he could barely make it up through the ditch. It's a little forward, but he was quartered to us a bit. And him piling like that makes me think it exited through his, his other shoulder. Does it make sense to just go down there before dark, you think? Yeah, or not? I think so. I think it does. Okay, good. Almost wonder if it's worth us going up there though, Nick, and walking, since we know right where he's at, where it's gonna be quieter walking and we'll be able to see him from further. Yeah, it's like we're not gonna be able to get through that quiet. Did you ever get footage of him down there? Yeah, I could just see his tines by the way. That deer's laying down right down there somewhere, presumably dead, but since we got light and good wind, we're gonna loop around where you can see the grass get shorter there. And we should be able to see them laying up in there from further away. I don't want to track the blood just because there'll be loud crashing through there in case he were to still be alive. I think we'll be able to get eyes on him up there. So we're gonna go do that. We're just going pretty slow here now, just don't let it get too early. Right at the base of that tree. Yeah.
I mean, you heard it. I'm really glad we came up here. Me too. Because he was not going to live. No, but he was going to get up and probably move. Yeah. I mean, I'm he was just sitting there head bobbing, and he was not with it. Because, like, a deer that was not hit wouldn't have let us get up to here. I mean, he, whatever I hit first, he wasn't going to live through it. But he was going to be alive for yeah. potentially several more hours. So I'm really glad we came up here. This isn't something you should do, I don't think, unless you're confident in it and the conditions are right. Like, I'm not saying, like, if you hit one, just go start looking for him. Like, there's situations where, like, if he disappears into something where you can't, don't have a beat on him and you don't think you can make it work. But in my opinion, you owe it to the animal. If you can get a follow-up shot that day, you should do it. Not all situations are going to be able to do that. But I'm going to always try to, if, I, like, if it's within reason. It's always like this. I did not expect his head to be up when we got up here, but we did that move just to be safe, because if we would have followed that blood, we would have went crashing through there, and he would have went sailing out the other way, and we would have really been scratching our heads in. We played it safe, and I'm glad we did. I think Nick and I were both pretty confident he was going to be down, especially his reaction after the shot. But we haven't gone up to him yet. We're just going to go get the other guys. We're just going to go get the other guys and come get a, back. Get a deer cart and uh, come back in here and get him, I guess. <laughs> What a, what a roller coaster of a night. <laughs> it was all the way up. It went down. Yeah. And then we're going, we're, we're starting to go back up slowly. Yeah. Did you really shoot one? <laughs> you didn't send me the video, Nick. I, I was too torqued. I'm still too torqued. I'm sorry. You well, won't I, believe what happened. I still don't believe it. Well, that's the you thing. I've been asking. I've been asking you guys what the heck happened. The thing is, I never told, tell more of the truth. And no. even if I told you the truth right now, I don't think you'd believe me. <laughs> well, probably not. But I know you probably got video evidence of it. When I keep asking you to I send do. me the I video do. evidence, you'll I'm see like, that in due time. I just want to watch it so that I know the, the what. I'm dying over here. <laughs> like, all right, all right. I'll show it to just you. Just let me see it. So did he just pop up that close? Mm-hmm. Closest he was was when we first saw him. Jeez, so I've Jake. I got the camera in my hands. Oh, Jake, that thing's big. <laughs> We're rolling in. See what the boys did. We're gonna see what happened here. Me and Cole are all fired up. We don't even know what happened. This <laughs> all we got was a picture from Nick of over the shoulder footage. So. You guys Is it down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't get no more down. <laughs> <laughs> They've been screwing with me for the last hour and a half. <laughs> he sent me a Snapchat of this, just the still frame of him at full draw. And I'm like having a come apart. You know, like, what, is, what is that? Like, that's a big buck. Does he, does the arrow go off or anything? And then I didn't hear nothing for a while. And then Nick's like, we're going to have a, we're going to have a good uh, group drag out tonight. I'm like, no, you, you're either messing with me or what the heck happened? I said, send me the video. So then he sends me a video of Jake looking at the still frame on the camera and doesn't show me the actual video of it. I, was, I got it and I looked at it and I was like, oh, they shot the doe tonight. And then I was like showing Cole and I looked at it again. I'm like, I was like, holy, oh, I was like, a big buck. <laughs> you better see this, Cole. Yeah, here, do that here. Oh boy. This is after Jake's already That's knocked his, he already knocked his arrow one. off the rest and then re-knocked it. Oh gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where he's dead. <laughs> after, after I saw that, I was shaking for like 30 minutes. Just oh, yeah, thinking about it. I was over, I was across the way in that parking lot, just like this. Just All right, let's go get walking him. around in circles. Let's go get him. I'm kind of torqued up right you now. Got little but, butterflies going on yeah, in there. I do. Now that I'm back, you're where it all went down. All right, we've got the crew gathered up. We're gonna go. I guess we gotta grab the deer cart. <laughs> That'd be a good thing to remember. You're not gonna put him on your shoulder and walk? No, he seemed like maybe he had too big of a body for that, Cool. You could maybe, I couldn't do it anymore though. In my old age, I'm giving warm grief for his gray hair, I probably got more than he does. <laughs> probably, he shows up more in that black. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're gonna march back in here and go get this thing. Excited to see him, we didn't go up to him at all, so it'll be fun to do it all together.
Happiness is an October cold front. <laughs> <laughs> Helps when it's been 95 degrees for three and a half months. <laughs> uh -huh. Now you're sweating. Think you're gonna take a photo of a dead deer, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Pretty confident. 100%. <laughs> Might take a couple. He's not there when we get back. I think somebody stole him. I don't think he got up. Uh, Where'd y'all shoot him at? He's either in that clump or he's right up here. That's where we're sitting next. Oh, yeah, there's the point. Yeah, you're right. He should be right up there, like he was underneath that bush, kind of. That willow, 30 yards. Maybe. I think he's just further over here to the right. Around the seat stuff. Maybe he was under those right there. Where your, where's the deer car at? Right there. Right there in a the big opening. I don't think you're on the right point, are you? Yeah, we are. Oh wait, is it the next one? I don't know. You guys, did you guys mark him? No, we should have though. Not so sure he's not right. You should probably go back up there where you shot him from and get a gauge. Yeah. I'll go up there. You sure he wasn't underneath this willow? Nick's saying he's under this willow right here. No, he wasn't. I don't this tall. Hey, there he is. <laughs> what? <laughs> you see him? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Right where we left him. <laughs> oh wow, there he is. <laughs> Yeah, Jake, he's oh. down. Holy crap, Jake. <laughs> That's a body, son. Holy smoke. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. He's, he's honestly bigger body than what I figured he was going to be. Holy smokies. We're so scatterbrained. We probably should just pin where we last were. I, <laughs> no, I figured you guys. Did. I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, Nick will man. put his hands on. Yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna try to not sit on a broadhead because there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <maybe. laughs> his head is like a horse. It is. Life comes at you quick sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you don't stop and look around, you just might miss it. Yeah. There's a hole right there. That's a... Oh, there's two holes right there. That front one. <laughs> right in front of the elf. Right there. <laughs> yeah, Jake, you nailed him all three times, bud. The okay. body on this thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. He goes brow time. That is so cool. I don't know how you notice that split. Oh, I know. He was only 10 yards away. <laughs> Tried to get one out of this spot for years, and then it all happens in 10 minutes. We needed some redemption here, because I've messed up twice pretty big just on my own and we've got a lot of other close calls in here too yeah mm -hmm. so it's fun it's cool to finally get one down that is a big sucker jake <laughs> oh, that thing's head is huge yeah old buck yeah Jack <laughs> and body slam that's a mature animal listen listen to this sound now listen Oh yeah, oh. there it was. <laughs> yup, that'll do, donkey. That'll do. In the morning, I'm making waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Our schedule did just get freed up a little bit here. You think he's book? <laughs> Good enough for my book. <laughs> my scrapbook. Free ride. You get to ride in the back of a GMC Sierra that's got 310,000 miles. Down, maybe. Just like that. Yeah. There you are. Nice thing about this deer car is I have a nice little green mark so you can remember. <laughs> Just exactly how you got them out. <laughs> Hands for hunger. Holy crap, dude. They got fed. <laughs> well, Jake got him uh, field dressed, so we're gonna cart him back to the truck and haul him over and get him on Ted's new skinning rack. And, have a time. And, and admire him, I'd imagine, for a few more hours before we go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to try out your deer hoist? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can go back and crank this thing up, huh? I hope he yanks it straight to the ground. <laughs> he might. It's not a very good one. It'll probably take us like two hours to get him actually up there. Here we can just roll him over. Show us how to do it. This will take a while. We need a bigger gears is what you're saying. We need a, uh, yeah. So like a drill. He's going up pretty fast though, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he actually is going up faster than I figured. Are you confident in this, Ted, that it's going to hold? 
Huh? You think it's gonna hold? Uh, I think it'll hold, yeah. Good. That's a good test case, because if it holds him, it's gonna hold pretty much anything else. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to horse him. I wonder if there, is there a, is there a drill bit end on the end of it where you can put well, a drill? Well, you can get a, like a socket for that. Oh, really? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah that's a way to do it. <laughs> but this is kind of funnier. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is more entertaining from this standpoint. You might need two full batteries on a drill to get that thing up. Yeah, no kid. Oh, let's hold him right now. Let's do it. Yeah, he's up. Getting these loins out so Nick can start doing stuff to him. He got his heart cleaned up. We start with those two. Maybe get some back straps out tonight still too and fry those up, I guess. It's gonna be fairly warm still tonight. It's gonna really cool down tomorrow, but gotta get his hide off him and get him quartered up probably tonight and just hang him in some game bags. You see what we got here? His fresh loins right out of this buck Jake just killed. Might as well, we got a black stone. We might as well get it hot. Put some seasoning on there and some fresh meat before we put the rest of it on ice. Just some little nuggets, some little tasty morsels. Get us by. As fresh as it gets right there. Looks quick. Mm. And that. Thank you. We're gonna need a back strap that whenever you get to it. I'm gonna go ahead and whip up some mac and cheese. Dude, hey, I was That's thinking. That's kind of my special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just go ahead and have me a little taste. Just make sure it's all right. Just a little chef's taste. Yeah. That's fine. Mm. Oh, yeah. We Could have cooked it a little less, but we probably need to get the boys in here before there ain't no more backstrap left. He did Bobbing. exactly that. He likes that. Bobbing for backstrap. Well, usually around these openers, we overthink it. It seems like we didn't do that this afternoon. We pretty much just went into a spot that wasn't too far off the road. As you saw, all those younger bucks and does up closer to the food source and just pushed back to the bedding area past that where we've seen bucks in the past. Ward was talking back to how many years ago back when you guys first started hunting that spot. Probably 10 or 11 years ago. Pretty much the first time you ever went in there, you saw a huge buck that time. Yeah. And we've had several encounters back in there since. A lot of times right around this time of year. So, so I was just hunting with Crystal, so I didn't have much time to scout. So that was basically all I was basing it off of was years past experience this time of year, uh, seeing bucks in that spot. and. We went in there and we're just kind of hoping to at least observe something off in the distance, but luckily we kind of set ourselves up better than we have in the past in that spot where we had a little more cover around us, so. Wind cover, <laughs> some willow cover. Yeah, yep. cold front. Cold front, that definitely, I mean. And moving past those deer is a big, big deal. Yeah. Because a lot of folks would have probably saw those deer, saw all that sign, and they would have set up on and that We sign. thought about it, but he was just like, nah, let's just go for it. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you said well, that. Well, of course you are. At this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm real glad. <laughs> but we're gonna eat them up here. It's all good. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Thank you guys for the help. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Any parting words of wisdom, Cole Booth? I hope. I mean, don't overthink it. I guess. There you go. If there's one thing I want to do. It's over there again. <laughs> Go with your heart. Go with what your heart tells you to do. I don't normally eat this, but I'm going to do it just one piece. Right well, he's going with that heart right now. So, See you guys.